Okay, I had to go through this convoluted, stupid procedure in the new Bible works in order to get the text back to the color I used to be able to specify as the default. So at least it's now yellow so you can see it. Now the question is, for this 308 syllables, which is playing on Noah in the boat from the time God told him to go in until his birthday, because you know your death day is your birthday, what's the application for church? Well, church corporate dies on the day that is going to end up being called the rapture. We all get called home, those of us who are left. My bet is that there's only going to be one of us left. Okay? There is nothing in the Bible to argue that stupid left behind garbage, which is written by stupid people who wouldn't know the Bible if it bit them. There's nothing to argue that, you know, millions of people disappear and clothes just fly, fall on the sidewalk all folded. Nothing like that. People in planes just disappearing while the planes are still flying. Nothing in scripture says that. It's not secret either. The very day of the rapture, to, to two witnesses arrive at the Temple Mount and explain it to everybody plus there's some angel flying overhead. I've already covered that before in the rev the rev play dot htm and besides you can just read it yourself. Now here's the point. Until that happens you don't know when it's gonna happen. You can't tell how mature you are let alone how mature church is. The criterion for the rapture is Ephesians 4.13. I've covered that before. When we are all corporately mature at the maturity level of Christ. That doesn't mean each one of us is that mature. That means it's like a mosaic. Each one of us is going to have something where we reflect him. It's kind of hard to imagine, but God can do anything. And when that happens, that's when the balloon goes up. And there might only be one of us left on the planet at that time. Okay? The Last Believer would make a great movie and a better, more doctrinal movie if we could make it. So what's highlighted in yellow in front of you, okay, has a lot of applications. But the most important application is to church. Okay? We don't know when it's going to happen. That's verse 36 in yellow in front of you. Okay? Verse 37, for the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. In other words, everybody's, thir verse 38, engaging in their normal life. Yeah, because the rapture can occur at any time. Okay? And until the flood came, see, flood, 308, this is really, the, the, the meter really helps you understand what he's talking about. Till the flood came and took them all away, so the coming of the Son of Man. Okay, now, verses 40 through 44, okay, are about the second advent. Okay? And the reason why you know that is because, see, he's saying, so will the coming of the Son of Man. The world isn't going to see the coming of the Son of Man at the rapture. The world sees the coming of the Son of Man at the um, second advent. So what he's doing here is he's drawing a parallel between the rapture, which is a kind of flood, all right, and then the duration of the rap, the duration of the tribulation is right here, the seven years, taking them all away. And then at the end of it is the coming of the Son of Man. So this is the, bapti the baptism of fire, okay, right here. When he comes at the second advent, the unbeliever is taken off the earth. One guy in a field and another guy. One's a believer, he's left behind to go into the millennium. The other guy is an unbeliever, so he goes into the lake of fire, not the lake of fire, but into the jail that's, you know, still underneath the earth during the millennium. Okay? First example is two men. The second example is two women. Okay? 
using, you know, the terminology, the agricultural terminology of the time. Doesn't mean that, you know, we will be that low in agriculture at the time. Could be, might not be. All right? And therefore, he says, you do not know on which day the Lord is coming. Yeah, you don't know because you can't say now when the rapture is going to happen. You know, the, ter you know the, the timing after it happens, but it hasn't happened yet. So this is an application to church. Here is your future. Here is the future that you're going to know of and see, but it's not happening now. Now, you're like Noah, waiting for God to tell you when to go in the boat. You're like Noah, you know, his birthday, remember, his birthday occurred 57 days before God tells him to go into the boat. See? See, you're in Christ. Christ died on Passover. So, in effect, your birthday is Passover because the day that you got saved really is retroactive to the day Christ died. So, your birthday is, in effect, on Passover when Christ paid for your sins. So, your birthday ties to Noah's birthday. And you're, as it were, waiting for Pentecost to occur. Waiting for Christ to, to you know, for God to put you in the boat. You get put in the boat when you die. You get put in the boat at the rapture. But you're waiting for God's order. You don't know when that's going to happen. Because Pentecost is now sort of like metaphorical. You can't count it. You could have counted it in the old days. But we're church now. We have a different time. You know, it's a body count for us. Christ paid for a certain number of bodies on the cross. And there's no prediction about how long that's going to be. The only thing that's certain is the number of bodies. Okay, so you don't know when your Lord is coming, highlighted in sort of greenish now. Alright, and then he's reminding you why that's important to remember. If you knew what time the thief was coming. See, I come like a thief, remember? He's going to, that's what John's going to write in Revelation. I come like a thief. If you knew what time the thief was coming, you'd been aware of it and been prepared. So get prepared now. That's the whole point of the rapture doctrine. Get prepared. Don't sit there and drool over historical events in the Middle East, like the stupid TBN people who are all dominionists, and they hate Christ. They wouldn't know the Bible if it bit them. Don't drool over coming events and say, Oh, the end times, brother. Yeah, the end time might end with your life, and it might be tonight. You don't know when the thief is coming to take away your life. God is a thief. A thief strikes suddenly. That's the way that thievery worked in the ancient world. It wasn't secret. It was sudden. That's the lesson you're supposed to draw. Right now you're in the boat with Noah. Right now you're in the boat with Christ. He died on the cross for your sins. You are. He is pregnant with you. And the idea is for you to become pregnant with him before he comes to steal you away. You see? So this is definitely an application to church. All right? For this reason, you must also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you don't think. Yeah. Because this is an application highlighted in yellow to church directly. Now, the one thing I'm still not sure I understand about this, I understand why he's doing it metaphorically at 308 syllables. But I'm not sure if he's making some kind of timeline that we're supposed to pay attention to. And I'll have to try to cover that in the next increment or as soon as I can figure out what it is.